today I want you to think about something. Have you ever made the decision to be successful? I know, I know, you've made decisions to take on some new endeavor, but have you ever made the decision to be successful? Think about it. Hey, this is Glenda with another edition of The Hustler Mindset. The title today is The Decision. No, none of that crap with LeBron, but something that's uniquely closer to you and more important than that BS. In the course of putting together the Hustler Mindset Project, many truths have bared themselves. Sometimes you don't know why you do what you do, and I'm guilty of that because I finally connected some dots. It, it was just kind of like it blew my mind because it was like, shh, shh, boom. I was going through some of my old boxes that, you know, when I moved, there's things I didn't unpack. And I finally got around to them, and I came across some books that I bought in the 90s. Very, very pivotal time point in my life. I bought this book, Super Learning. This is, this, <laughs> this is the edition. It is, like I said, I cannot remember the exact year. 97, 98, I'm thinking early 99, somewhere around that point in time. But essentially, as the title implies, super learning, it teaches you how to learn faster, how to retain more things. And I went through this book and went through many exercises from you know front cover to back cover. And I, I do want to say this was during that period of time when I was going through hell, living in the boarding house with crackheads, because I had a lot of time to examine my circumstances. Well, think about this. I read this book and went through all of those exercises before a pivotal point in my life. Now, another book that I read around the same time period, here it is, <laughs> The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. And around another time, Around the same time, I came across Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field. This book was pro. Oh, you know, put that up there. I think I got it cheaper than that. I think I got it cheaper than that. Super Learning, maybe 15 bucks. So that's 25, let's say 30 with tax, whatever. And Lead the Field, which was 100 bucks. So. A hundred and thirty dollars spent enabled me to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. I wasn't the only one that read this book. I wasn't the only one that read Super Learning, and I was not the only one to get Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field. What was the difference? It was the decision. If you remember in the earlier video, I had talked about the last time that I got laid off. I was sitting in the chair and the guy asked me, did I want to stay you know, seven days, perhaps two weeks, get a little extra time. And I made a decision at that point. Probably one of the first true decisions under fire. I'm getting laid off. I don't have any money in the bank, and the guy's talking to me, and he's, he's, he's being decent. He's being generous. He's doing what he can to ensure that I, a perfect stranger, actually has a little more income. And I politely declined him, and I thanked him. I said, hey, thanks. I really appreciate you, know, you extending that overture to me, but I'm going to go now. I made a critical decision that I didn't know at the time, but it meant I had a lot of faith in my time because I didn't panic, but I had been laid off twice before. And I knew that I would find something and I set out on it, but that day turned a switch inside of me where I can no longer just settle for getting a job because a job 
was not security to me. It was a liability. But that decision, I don't know where it came from. But I made an active, purposeful decision. Then I made another decision that instead of me going out, because, you know, I'll tell you the story. I used to work in the hospital. You know, when they say, hey, we're going to send blood samples to the lab, I was that guy. However, I had screwed up, got myself in a very bad way mentally, cussed out a supervisor, and pretty much got myself blacklisted in the healthcare industry because people talk. It was a very small community back then, and I could have went somewhere I didn't want to go, worked for someone I didn't want to work for, and made less money. I didn't want to be there. I hate the people I'm working for, and I'm making less money. It, it was too much. So I went out and I had to start all over. In the videos when I say that I have been where you've been, I'm not kidding. I can't rely on the field that I have all this experience in because I screwed up. I just own up to it. I screwed up. I couldn't go back there. I didn't have any experience. And I, I do remember when people were like looking at my resume and they would see all the medical experience. I was like, hey, why aren't you doing that? That sounds like a pretty good job. My brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, or I know someone who knows someone who does that, and it's a pretty good deal. Why are you here? The whole interview would just totally turn to, why aren't you in the medical field? So, as a consequence, here's this guy with all this experience in the medical field, but he's not in the medical field. There must be something wrong with him. And... I didn't get a chance. I mean, jobs, you know, and that's the reason I lied. I created my own reference on the job I felt that I can do, and I was able to do it, and that's how I got in with Rental Crate. But that was another decision. I'm going to tell you how I did it. I do remember it was hot. It was a hot day, and I was sitting there, and I had actually moved from the boarding house to a house in East Point, which is another decision. Actually, I'll share that with you. Back in the day, in the early, early stages of the internet, I actually spent about three grand getting a nice computer, an IBM PL, PGL 300, 17-inch monitor, laser printer, it was 3,200 bucks and some change. A lot of money, but it was the best of the best. I mean, right now, my iPhone, has more features than that computer did at the time. But at the time, it was state of the art. I made that decision to be an early adapter because I firmly believed that the internet was going to change the world. And if you were not facilitating yourself with computers or getting on computers or buying the computers or learning softwares, you were going to be left behind. Well, that decision enabled me to create my reference because the thing is I want you to think about this 98 99 there were many people who didn't have a home computer back then I remember I was the first one to get DSL in my neighborhood because I called and called and it's like yeah okay and it's like it's there I was the first one to get DSL and when you go from dial up to DSL, whoa, Nelly. It's like you got to, people will come over and they'll be like, it's like, Jesus Christ, this is like a thousand times faster. So, by making those decisions and spending that money, I was in a position to make professional resumes from home. Laser printer, remember, I had a high end, high yield laser printer. So, I was able to make professional resumes, and other things, and business cards. I was able to do a lot of stuff with that setup. I mean, I had a, I mean, it was a business set. It was a, uh, the system configuration was designed for business. And I fully optimized and maximized capacity of the system. But it was a decision that I made. And the, the point I'm getting to you is, decisions that I made 12 years ago, 14 years ago, have impacted my future today. If I did not go through all of that 
crap with that computer because that was the days that windows would crash everything you would have to take everything off and reload the operating system which means you lost everything which learned meant was taught you you had to back up stuff so by default of making that decision i became somewhat of a techie i'm not a total geek in that regard but if a if a tech person's talking to me in best buy somewhere i get it because of that experience with that computer by decision now in this thing and where i'm going with this is at some point you have to make a firm purposeful decision not well we're going to go with this or that's a decision but it's a passive decision a firm decision is when this man was telling me that they were going to let me go and he could get me maybe seven days two weeks tops of extra income I sat in the chair and I said no I'll leave today that wasn't kind of like a sort of, I mean, because there was so much emotion, there was so much impact with that. It's like, hey, you don't have a job. You don't have a lot of money on you. These are dire circumstances. But that decision spoke to me having a tremendous amount of faith in me. And it moved me from a different level in my life. Because, honestly, if I hadn't gone through that process with being laid off three times and getting those books, I would not be where I'm at today. I know it because when I connected those dots and I went through this stuff and I found those books and it was just like, whoa, because how does that impact? And you know, we're gonna get into those books because they're very powerful books. No one talks about them. But the thing is, it prepared me for this future that we have. We live in a future where you must learn stuff, unlearn stuff, learn stuff, unlearn stuff. You have to be constantly in the loop. And one of the things, that, one of the goals for me is to always be in a learning mode because I looked at old people growing up and the people who did crossword puzzles or kind of stayed active or had some passion, they were more youthful than the people that didn't. Their faculties were much more, they were much sharper. And the thing is, like, if you ain't using this stuff, it's just going to disappear on you. So I was just like, hey, I'm just going to become a lifelong learner. Um, Adiac, uh, I will find that word. But essentially, these decisions that you have to make, and you have to make them with some deliverance, you got to be deliberate with it. It can't be a wimpy, oh, it can't be wimpy. It can't be passive. It has to be very willful and deliberate because I am the guy that mere months after getting laid off from a job that I was great in, making the decision to not go. And, and the, the thing is, because I got laid off, I, you know, full disclosure, that automatically put me on unemployment immediately. You know, I didn't have to wait and everything because, you know, they filled out my paperwork. They didn't play games. So I got unemployment. So I had some income coming in. It was $1,000 a month, $250 a week. That's what I had coming in. So I was not 100% ass out. Now, I looked for jobs because that was part of being on unemployment. You had to go down to the labor department and do all that stuff. But I made a decision that I was going to get jobs that benefited me and gave me skills to move to the next level. That was the whole purpose of creating my resume, creating my fake reference to get with Renegrate because I moved into a different dynamic because I don't know if any of you have ever worked in the healthcare field because everyone's like, hey, it's lovely, it's wonderful. Healthcare is some of the hardest, grittiest, and you can the potential of being exposed to all kind of nasty stuff is quite high. I actually suffered a needle stick from an HIV infected patient once. That's what they thought. And I was on the rifamycin and this HIV protocol prophylactically for a long time. It upset stomach every day. And the, the fear that I could have HIV, I went through that. So, you know, healthcare, there's a lot of stuff that can happen. There's a lot of things that happen in hospitals you never hear about. So, I moved out of that. And I was afraid. In the military, I was in healthcare. I got out. I was, when I was at Fort Mac, I had a part-time job at Cobb General Hospital. It was a very, very strong security blanket. And I was like a fish out of water because 
and when you work for business and you get in the corporation, there's a certain lingo. That lingo didn't exist in the hospital. I was always behind. And then, but I didn't stay behind because of those books and because of Earl Nightingale. For the first time in my life, I was making decisions, and I noticed something. Decisions that I made, being willful, intentful, and with a great purpose, I accomplished. Because I made that decision, I went through the goals, I wrote them down, I set timelines, and they happened. Now, the thing is, and I'm going to just tell you this with goals, either it's going to happen before the timeline, the deadline, or it's going to happen much further after. It's a trip, but you got to have that timeline because that gives you more perspective. But the thing is, I inadvertently, due to hardship and being fed up, and this is a lot of times that people make pivotal changes in their life, is when they're fed up, they can't take it anymore, and they're just like, ah, I made a serious, deliberate decision that totally changed my life. But we're going to go back before those decisions. How did I get there? Where did I get that stuff from? Those books. Power of your subconscious mind. I read the book. And when I read it the first time, I was kind of like, bullshit. You're just thinking that's going to happen. You're just going to think. You know, I was pretty much not taking in the lesson. Because I was willful and I was like, ah, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Therefore, I'm putting in good stuff in, but I'm vigorously fighting it with my disbelief. But even with that, because I read the book and I took the information in, I noticed willful, purposeful, deliberate decisions, and I just went forward with no inner chatter. I got the job at Renegade really great, amazingly quick. I was a little upset because I had a ton of unemployment, right? And I was learning stuff, and I was happy. I, I didn't have any money. I was able to pay my rent, but I was happy. You know, I was really, really happy because I was learning stuff, and I was taking chances. So I get the job, we're in the crate. I'm there eight months. I made a decision. Told you about the chick that was selling furniture, met her at Neocon, and, you know, I'm 180000 selling furniture. I became her new BFF. Left that job, got into the furniture industry, learned some stuff there, left that job, started my own contract furniture company. And that happened within roughly two and a half years. So I went from living in a boarding house with crackheads in a bad part of town. A really bad part of town. I don't know if you remember, but there was this uh, Muslim, E.L. man, who was accused of shooting two deputies. I lived two doors down from him. I knew the guy on the street in passing. We're not, we were not friends. But from what I knew, they actually kept a certain part of the neighborhood safe. It was a park that was off limits to drug dealers so the kids could play. That was the truth. Whenever things got happy, gunfire would erupt. I live in that neighborhood. So two and a half years. Because I made a decision to get those books in Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field. In the beginning, because you know, and even with the hustler mindset, I encourage you to listen to the videos over and over again. Because every time you listen, you're gonna pick up something you're gonna miss. Because frequently we live in a world where you don't have a lot of free time to just devote to one thing. So the phone's going to ring. Or you're gonna, if you have children, they're going to like, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, Daddy. You're going to have to deal with that. And when they're coming in and they say, Hey, Mom, I need you. Even if your attention is only diverted for 30 seconds, you're going to miss something. Probably 45 seconds. So listen to it again. Listen to it again. You'll pick up more stuff and more stuff. And that's something that I got from Earl Nightingale and Lee DeFille. He's like, listen to it again. Because each time you're going to pick up some stuff. And it's true. Same thing here. Well, with making these decisions, it gives you control. And it's a process. It's a process because it doesn't happen overnight. I read the books and really the lessons didn't take for about a year to a year and a half before they really started to blossom because I stopped fighting it. Because, you know, I'm a man and we as men are like, I'm strong, I'm smart. 
And it's just manly not to admit you don't know shit. And really it's a fallacy and it keeps many of us men back. Let it go. How about myself? There's people way smarter than I am. And then I started to be successful. And then I, I've just started this trend of success and a positive life that hasn't ended because of those decisions. So if you're thinking about, are you just existing? Are you actually living a life of design, purpose, and intent? I want you to really think about it. Have you made a decision to be successful? Going back, I've said it in the video several times. I'm going to say it here again. When I went out to the storage auction trail, I told a regular, I'm going to turn this into a full-time thriving operation. He threw up his hand, laughed at me, and walked off. And I did it. And the thing is, there were people out there on the storage auction trail with more money, more resources, more time, and more help than I had. And I was able to get to a higher level than they could because, see, this was their level. And it, it, it is really, I shouldn't even put my hand there. I should just draw a line. That level right there, that was their level because it was in their mind. It's like, I'm only going to go this high. And because of ego, arrogance, they only went that high. I was able to do two and three times what people had been out there five, six, seven years within a year. Understand those first few months were rough because they wore my ass out. But listening to Earl, super learning. Now that's where I have to think I was able to process and absorb so much information very quickly because that's what the storage auction resale business is about. Getting information, processing it, and figuring out what to do with it as fast as possible. Super learning rewired my brain because you will learn better if you listen to Baroque music because you're going to find out. Get the book, Super Learning. You can get it on Amazon. That, you know, I looked, I think a copy, I think that copy, that version, because that's one of the first versions. Is currently going for anywhere from three to five, you know, from 99 cents to five bucks. I think that's where they were when I checked. Now, you know, so you get it for 99 cents, it's, it's what, five bucks for the book. Get it. Get the book. We're going to go through some of that stuff. And it's very, very pivotal because the thing is, and part of rewiring your brain. And like I said, I didn't really understand what happened to me. It was like I was taken up in a ship by aliens and came back better. Because I want you to look at the process. Making decisions. I want you to really look at the process. The power of your subconscious mind. The core element of that is if you feed the subconscious good stuff, the subconscious is going to spit out good stuff. That's the simplified, easy way without getting too convoluted because we're going to talk about that book in great depth. Take super learning. Learn things faster. Remember stuff. As a kid, I, rem I read books on how to increase your memory. I think that's one of the reasons that I can remember so much stuff that happened in the storage auctions. And this is something that you can do, but you're unaware of it. Have you ever been thinking about something? You know, certain a person, a word, then other memories pop up like immediately as if you press a button. That's called mnemonics, I believe. And that will, actually the Greeks used to do this. So what it is, is you associate something with that memory. So whenever you think about that something, that memory automatically comes up like a computer file. Like you put in D, then, you know, you're, you're in your search field and you start populating the search field and things start popping up. That's what happens in your memory when you do the mammomics peg system. This is how Greek orators remembered their speeches. I mean, seriously, because they had nothing else, so they had to develop their minds. I didn't know that, you know, reading in that little Alabama, Adamsville, Alabama library, reading about that stuff, I had no clue to the tons and tons of benefit that would be Decades and decades of benefit from reading those books when I was a kid. So, once again, making a decision. Because you have to make a decision right now that you're going to continue to educate yourself.
There's no such thing as being done. There, well, actually it is. It's called death. When you're done, you're dead. As long as you're like kicking and you got to keep feeding that mind. You got to keep growing. And that's one of the things like, you know, I put in YouTube if you haven't. Get yourself a copy to Ink Magazine. Get yourself a subscription to, I mean, get yourself a subscription to Ink Magazine. Get yourself a subscription to Fast Company. And start reading business books. I'm going to recommend, and that's, that's going to be another part of the Hustler Mindset. I'm not putting this out there on YouTube because, and I'm, I'm going to explain that. I love YouTube. But the thing is, there are so many people who are bucking for attention that they would rather destroy or denigrate some great information just to get their own paw waving in the wind. And you know, there's too many of those folks up there. Whereas on this format, we could put some stuff in there, we could chop it up, and you get good, good information. Now, how do you make a decision? I know it sounds very simple. How do you make a decision? Because I know you think, yeah, I'll make decisions. I'm going to tell you something that's going to piss you off. A lot of the decisions that you're thinking you're making are influenced by great and clever marketing that's introduced to you in a limited framework. Like say you go into a shoe store and the, the trap, you know, buy one, get 50% off of the other one. You're thinking, hey, I'm getting a great deal. I'm going to get these shoes, then I'm going to get these shoes, and I'm getting saving money. You're offered choices in a limited framework and you go and you actually spend more money to take advantage of the savings. Think about that for a second. If you buy the first pair of shoes that you wanted and you don't get the other ones, you actually save more money than if you bought both of them. Because it wasn't your intention to buy both of them. But due to marketing, and hey, if it's a great deal, you need to go ahead and get it. Just like the super size with McDonald's. Hey, well, you know... The regular size is only 39 cents less. So for 39 cents, I might as well move up and get the other one. There's a process. There's cost efficiencies built into that. They're actually making money regardless of which one you buy. <laughs> but they make more money when you buy the bigger size. Because you're only getting a little bit more. It's called supersize, but from a pennies to nickels to dimes to quarters to dollars perspective, they're maybe spending 5%, maybe 3% more to make that supersize, but you've given them a lot more money. But you made that choice in a limited framework. When you go buy a car, same thing. And there's this lesson I need to put it in there, but I'm going to find it and I'm, I'm going to send the link out because this guy has a method. Like I don't buy cars frequently and I usually pay cash because I do the research. Typically flipping cars all the time could delay your retirement seven years to a decade. That's how much money flipping cars too frequently pulls out of your income pool. A decade. So flossing now can mean you can be working much longer and later. Proven fact. Look it up. But how do you make decisions? You start from a core perspective of what's truly important to you. Because most of us in society, once again, decisions made under a limited framework. And I'll give you a great this, uh, example of that for many people. Dating. Many people do not date who they actually like. I know you're like, no, 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 I'm dating who I'm like. Most people, yes, most people date who looks good enough to justify being seen with them so they don't have to explain it to their friends, their parents, because here's this guy, and I'm going to use a guy who's an asshole, but he's a doctor. You don't have to explain his behavior or any of that stuff to your friends or family because he's a doctor. Oh, she married a doctor, she married up. You're a guy, you're dating this girl, she's a bitch but she's a gorgeous bitch you don't have to explain anything to your parents your friends it's like why are you oh god she's beautiful i totally understand but if you date this fat girl who rocks your world who treats you like the best thing on the planet who is your best friend 
Your true friends will be happy for you, but most of society will like, why is that good looking guy with that fat chick? And a lot of people do not have the courage to move forward and say, fuck society and date the person that makes them happy. Once again, choices given to you in a limited framework. Part of the hustler mindset is to teach you how to pop out of that limit framework, be your own man, be your own woman, be your own person, and do what you want to do to make yourself happy and your life better. Because once you shed that limited framework and start living a life of purpose, design, and intent, the air is sweeter, you have more fun, you sleep better, and at the end of the day, your Mondays are just as great as some people's Christmases because you're living a life of intent, design, and purpose. That's the power of making decisions. Let's talk about the timeline. You make the decision today. Today is October 22nd, 2012. You may not really see massive benefits until October 22nd, 2014. I'm the guy that's going to give it to you straight. I'm not going to say, hey, it's going to be like that. For some of you, it could be like that. For some of you, it won't be like that. I don't know because of you, your unique circumstances in the life that you live. But I do know this. By making positive decisions based on your core values, today are going to have beautiful dividends in the future. Because you have to make the decisions, stay on track, and not give up. I can give you a few examples in my own personal life. YouTube. Told you. People laughed at me. YouTube's for kids. Why are you going to do that? You're a grown-ass man. Same people come to me for consulting help because they want to do a YouTube channel, but they miss the boat because what they want to offer, the feel is saturated. Books. My first editor. Well, let me write this for you because, you know, I mean, you, you got a great idea, but you really can't write. 15,000 books later, as a self-published author, this is the point of making decisions. Just like I have those stories, you, can have, you have those stories in some form and fashion already in your life. You just don't realize it. And you can have bigger and better ones because most of you are here from the resale business. Others, others are here because... Finally, I put out something that you can sink your teeth into because, hey, you know, storage auctions are cool, but it's not your thing. So that's why we're in here. But the whole deal is decisions. You have to make active decisions filled with purpose. Because you can make a decision, but if there's no passion behind it, there's no purpose, and if it's not aligned with your core value, you're not going to stick with it. That's the whole thing. Just because it looks good or it sounds good, if it is not in line with your core values, are you a person of Herculean self-discipline? The type of person that can drag yourself across a valley. There are people out there like that. That could be you. You may not need to tap into your core values. But for most of us, that's where it starts. That's where it ends. You have to deal with the core values. You have to tap into that. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Which is why at this juncture in the hustler mindset, because if you notice, I send out an email and I update it. Because as this course builds, it kind of shifts around. Because we're going to be talking about purpose. We're going to be talking about action. Because last week was action, this week is purpose. And making a decision. Because once you get it all together, I'm going to tell you something. When you get it together... And you're sitting there and you're writing out your goals. You get a chill. And the chill is because there's faith and hope. It's not like it's going to happen or there's leprechauns that's going to come in your room and like, bam, here's some coins. Have a great life. No, you get a chill because you're actually moving from being a passive person to making active, purposeful decisions for your life. That's when you get the chill. Because believe it or not, many of us, some of you are on autopilot based on stuff that was instilled into you from your parents and society. If you're lucky and you had great parents that instilled some wonderful stuff in you, you could be okay. If you're like a lot of people whose parents, as Earl talked about in Lead the Field, 
who didn't know this stuff existed. You know, you've heard people, it's like, the harder you work, the less money you make, you know. The more money you make, the more money you spend. That's a choice. That's not a given. More, more money, more problems. Once again, that's a choice. That's not a given. I know people with plenty of money and no problems, but they live a life of design and purpose, and they insulate themselves, and they don't go out talking about, hey, I have all this money. I mean, I have an associate. I had no idea how wealthy this person was, and that's just the way he likes it. Because the real deal is people typically, not always, but typically people with real wealth, and I'm going to, for the context of what I'm about to say, real wealth 10 mil or more that is somewhere working 24 7 to the point they don't have to do anything they don't want to if they want to wake up at 12 they can and they're still going to get seven figures in passive income that to me is real wealth uh, not a hundred thousand dollar year job not even a five hundred thousand dollar year job because if you don't do the right things and you don't have things set up the minute you lose that job you could go to where i was in that boarding house in the hood it can happen that's why I put up Broke on my other YouTube channel before they took it down. I got to figure out a way to show you some of those videos and not get in trouble. If I can, I will. But essentially, you you got to make those choices. Now, activity time. Yes, you know the drill. You ready? Go ahead and nod your head. You're ready. Turn off the phone. Turn off your computer or unlog out of stuff, anything that can be a distraction. And this sheet of paper is real simple. At the top, the decision. What are your core values? Only you know. First, and it's going to take a little time. It's going to take a little time. It's going to take a little time. What are your core values? Put them on the sheet of paper. And... Once you get in, you have to do this. You, you have to figure out what your core values because you could go out and set a set of goals and actually achieve them and be very unhappy because they're not aligned with your core values. So you got to figure out what they are. Because some of you, you don't know. You don't really know what your core values are. You never really had to think about it. And it's going to take uh, an exercise of discovery and it's going to be a process. And this is your goal for this week is to figure out what are your core values not your mama's core values not your daddy's core values what are your core values what really makes you tick and I'm gonna say usually when you're writing that list if it's something that scares you or make your heart beat that's probably close to it so that's your goal that's your activity for this week and this is one there's gonna be more stuff coming but the decision core values what are my core values ask yourself that it may not come to you for a day it may take you a week it may take you a whole month to figure this out because you've never kind of dug into yourself this way because a lot of our values and stuff are dictated to us by society and as long as you stay within that limited framework you don't really get in a lot of trouble you really don't the minute you step out of it you can get in a lot of trouble you can go to jail all kinds of stuff could happen but that's the price of being alive because the limited framework is designed to keep you as a sheep so the powers that can be can feast off you feast off you at will so you can be a rebel out there in the streets with your grenade launcher or you can be a happy sheep in the pasture then one day the van shows up and Billy he goes in the van you never see Billy again Next day, van shows up. She, uh, she's in a van. You never see her again. I'd rather be out in the street with my grade notcher. But that's just me. That's my decision. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you in the next video.